Um, we are going to talk about waves. But before we do, another book you're getting is Atlantic. Um, if you have not seen this one, love this book. Um, it starts off with, I am the Atlantic Ocean. And it goes through talking as if it, the Atlantic Ocean, um, it plays with, it plays with the pictures, there are ways that they change the writing in it. Um, I'm looking for the poetry one. Here's, here's one where they put poetry across the top of it. And it's just a fun, fun book. And it's describing the Atlantic Ocean and how important it is. So that's another book that you're getting. So when you're talking about ocean waves, one of my favorite activities I do with the kids is I have them all get stand up and they have to make a great big circle. They have to hold hands. I tell them, I've got the hand sanitizer, no worry. We will take care of you after you have to touch somebody's hands, you know, because they are gonna get cooties without a doubt. <laughs> These days, who knows, they might really, but anyway. <laughs> so I have them stand there and we take our arms and we take, I, and I always start to go one hand and make them go all the way around the circle. So we talk about how we can watch movement going around the circle, but everybody's still standing still. It's just their arms moving as they have gone back around the circle. So we talk about what a wave actually is. And a wave, I, another great question to give the kids when I first start is, before I even do that, I'll ask them, when you're watching a wave, what do you see? And usually they'll say, you see the water coming onto the shore. And I said, yeah, that's true, that's true. You can watch the wave, you can watch it come all the way in, you can watch it dip on the shore, right? And they said, yeah, and I said, well, okay, so as you're watching the water come in, if the water comes in and dumps on the shore, how come the ocean doesn't empty itself? How can water keep coming in and dumping on the shore, but there's still water out in the middle of the ocean? It's a good question to make kids think again. Make them ponder it. Make them write down an answer. Because most of them will say, well, it just goes right back out. But does it? Think about it. And so that's a great introduction. Doing the human wave is fun. You can also search and find human wave on YouTube. And that's fun to watch too. Watching it go all around the stadium. Um, so talking about ocean waves, the biggest thing to, rem to remind the kids, also, if you have a slinky, use a slinky. A slinky, ha I have one person stand on one side of the room and me on the other, and I'll make the slinky go up and down. They can watch it go back and forth, but neither one of us is moving. And so we talk about what's making it go back and forth. And we talk about how it's the energy traveling through that slinky. Well, it's the same thing with water. It's the energy traveling through the water that makes the wave. Where does the energy come from? It comes from the wind. The stronger the wind, the bigger the wave. The more, the more strength that wind has, the more energy it is giving to that water. So I tell the kids that a water molecule actually just goes up and down. And it goes in kind of an orbital motion. And I make them take their hands and say, that water just goes up and down and up and down. And that's why you see up and down because you have the energy going through it. As the waves are coming into shore, that shore is getting shallower and that water is still coming in, but as it's coming in and getting shallower, it tips over and breaks on the ocean. And what you see that water when it spits out, that you can kind of think of is it's releasing that energy and that energy is gone and then the water is still right where it was. Think about it, if you're on a boogie board, can you go out right beyond the breakers and float on that boogie board and just kind of stay there? Most of the kids can relate to that. So that's another way to do it. So making a wave bottle, they love making a wave bottle. And if you get a one liter bottle, um, just buying like a club soda or something in a one liter bottle is a great way to do it. Because as you, for a demonstration, for the kids, give them a 16 ounce water bottle. Works perfect. So you're gonna take your regular bottle, 
You're going to fill it with water. I'm going to pause for a minute so I can pour this in carefully. Okay, so we have filled it with the oil and we have water on the bottom and the oil on the top. I, I give the kids the option to have it colored. So this is the coolest part. Just, it has nothing to do with the weight, but it's very cool. And it's a great way to have a discussion of density. So I come around and I give them their choice of colors, depending on what I have. And I put several colors in and I let them watch it. And I say, now just watch what happens. I'm going, why does it sink and stop right there? So it's a great discussion to have on water density. And you can see that it goes through and ask the kids, what's on top? Most of them at first, when they see your bottle sitting around, most of them will think that the water is on top and the oil is on bottom. But what's kind of cool is as it sits there, it works its way through. Mine have a little bit of bubbles in it. But as it goes through and breaks to the water, I'm trying to force it. I would not have the kids move it at all. I have them just watch it. This is not wanting to cooperate. What else is new? Because I want it to. There it goes. It bursts when it hits the water. So a good discussion to have is why is the oil on top? Why is the water on bottom? Oil obviously is less dense than water. There's so many conversations you can have about that. You can talk about your chemical makeups. I love to pull up a molecule of water and a molecule of oil and show about how they're different and how it could be that the oil would be less dense. To make it a wave bottle though, you've got your oil and you've got your water and you've got it colored. I take a bead, something that will float. So I just drop a bead into it and then I tell the kids put that top on really, really tight and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So now you can see the bead, well you can't probably see it, but the bead sits on top here. So it is floating on the water. What is cool is they will sit and be mesmerized, but have them rock their bottle back and forth and they will find that that bead basically stays right in the center or where it was when it started. And that is a great way to show how the water is rocking from end to end, but that bead is staying still. So it's just showing how the energy is going back and forth and the water is actually not taking that bead back and forth. It's a great conversation to have um, with the density. You can take this, I pull this one out when I'm talking about water pollution also and talking about oil spills.